Okay, so I should be should be able to be heard from this position. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so I have here, <laughs> if I could get it to move, the Nintendo Labo Variety Kit. Um, I chose to do it this way because I figured, eh, I'll make a stream on it. <laughs> so I've got my Switch. I've got the kit. I haven't opened this yet. So we're going to be cracking into this fresh. Let's see what's up with it, shall we? All right, let's so put this off to the side. Of course. Um... <laughs> My ever handy set of uh, <laughs> clippers. Okay, cool. Get started. Pokemon Right, make, play, and discover. It all starts with your first Toy-Con project. So start up the game and get creating. So remove the game card, insert the game card, select make, and start building. All right, so... Of course... Perhaps I shouldn't have put those away. Packaging is so, like, nondescript. <laughs> Thing inside. Right. Put that off to the side for right now. I think I actually have a game in here, so... in that one and hope that there's no sort of updates or anything like that there's an update or something like that so hopefully that won't take too long <laughs> So we got our switch started, so we can go in here and hopefully get started. I'm going to put this over here. I know that you won't really be able to see that, but that's not really the point. The whole point is this whole thing, so. Uh, Labo software requires use of the Joy-Con controllers, HD Rumble feature. It says my controllers will be updated. Oh, it's actually updating the firmware in the controllers. That's interesting. I wonder if it's just the same as like your standard controller update. Just dead zones and all that sort of stuff. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't want to... I don't want to move on and with anything until this is all set, so I guess we just get to wait around for just a second.
Well, <laughs> that one's done. So I'm kind of hoping that this is um, at least relatively okay. I understand completely that this is cardboard and it's, you know, basically based on like imagination and stuff like that. So who knows what it's actually going to be like. Will there be lots to get out of this? I have no idea. Anyway, so let's start with make. First, we'll practice. Welcome to Nintendo Labo. Let's start with some make practice. I don't know why I decided that that would be a good idea to put it there, but that's fine. You guys can't see it anyway. Um. Hold forward to make the video play. All right, so we're gonna make a Joy-Con holder. So let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of this. So we don't need any of this right now, but it looks like we need a portion of this guy. All right, that's just a lot easier. <laughs> All right, so just remove this one part from sheet A. Be careful not to bend anything. We'll use the other pieces later. In the meantime, keep storage safely away in the box. It's a good idea to keep the console charging while you build a Toy-Con. Using the touch string, you can rotate the camera using your finger. Okay, well that's helpful. Or I can just use the D-pad. Oh gosh, I exited out of it accidentally. <laughs> can zoom in or out by sliding two fingers. You can move the camera in any direction. You can reset the camera by pushing the button in the, in the lower left corner. Now let's practice. Get a good look at the screen to make sure you have everything that you that you're building. Notice the back and front are different. Start with the printed side facing down. The key to good toy con construction is to create uh, is to crease firmly along the fold lines. I realize now that I can remove these little pieces. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of like, cardboard trash, aren't I? Also, the result of me removing cardboard is cat gets a new place to sit. <laughs> Okay. So be sure to crease them nice and firmly. The folded piece stands up on its own. That's a good sign. Don't worry if it doesn't stand up perfectly straight though. The 
There are a bunch of foldable creases. Carefully fold them one by one. See how much easier, easier it is if you crease them in the beginning? This part is called a tab. It'll be a very important not to ruin these. <laughs> okay, let's do what it says. We'll carefully crease all of the other things. So that way, we can carefully insert the tab. Okay, now it wants us to insert this. Alright, so there you go. We have one Nintendo Labo controller holder. And it's complete. Now let's attach the Joy-Con controllers. Be sure to push the Joy-Con Joy in all the way down. You can see the button through the back hole in, through the hole in the back. Okay. So, like that, basically. So part of the thing that is taking the longest so far, from what I can tell, is just, like, moving the directions forward. <laughs> I thought that that was the view that I would would want, but I'm changing my mind. A little closer, I feel, would be more appropriate. All right, so it's asking me if I want to go back and double check or go out to the run, run the real thing. No, I want to go into the real thing. Basically just showed a rocket blasting off. Alright, so the first thing here is looking like it's going to be pretty easy. It's the RC car. So the RC car... ...uses two of the Joy-Con and the Joy-Pad. There are two steps to complete. Step one out of two. Making the RC car and the antenna. Alright, so I need a different sheet. And that's this one with the green that I can barely see. <laughs> I'm using these lines on the back because they're actually easier for me to tell what they are. I want this thing. And of course, be careful not to bend anything. got this, which I can punch a couple things out of really quickly. And then this, which is perfectly fine just the way that it is. Store the other pieces. So we're going to start by creasing everything.
I'm just gonna move through this so we can get on to the actual thing. I kind of wish that there was like a, a much faster way to go through this. Oh gosh. No wonder these things take a, a little bit of a long time. Okay, it's time to put it together. Oh, there's two holes right here. How did I not see those? They were so tiny. Okay. That. Twist that. And that. Stay still, please. <laughs> and then I can carefully crease these four tabs here. And so, having done this, it looks like... Bring this all together. God, it takes so long. Okay. Put this up. And insert the tab. Is it all the way in? <laughs> Flip it over and be sure none of the six legs are damaged. The RC car is done. Next, let's move on to the antenna. Start with the printed side facing down. And fold the tabs over. This is going to be super exciting. <laughs> Let's attach the antenna to the console. Oh, gosh. So basically what you have to do is you slide these down into the uh, little rails for the Joy-Con. And so basically now you've got a little hat for your, for your uh, controller, for your console. I inserted both of them. The antenna is attached. Let's attach Joy-Con controllers. I'm ready. Sure, the minus symbol matches the minus symbol. Just to flip it over, Slide the rail of the Joy-Con into the slot until it reaches the thinner section. It may feel a little loose, but that's okay. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. Alright. 
I'm going to attach the controllers. I'll, I'll take this out of its little protective holder for right now. So I have, in effect, used the incorrect one. <laughs> I used the one that had no design on it. It's not like you could see it anyway. But anyway, so let's slide in our Joy-Con. So it hits that little thin part on the inside there. I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing when I'm talking about that. And then we do the same thing with the other side. And it's done. Flip it over. Do the Joy-Con and the controllers feel a bit loose? Not to worry. That's the key to making the RC car move. And now it's done. <laughs> so let's let's play now. If I turn down the brightness on this, you guys might actually be able to see what I'm doing. At least a tiny bit. Uh, da, 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 da. The heck? Oh, the infrared sensor on the back is actually filming me. That's interesting. It's like a very laggy... So basically, in effect, what I have is button controls set to a certain frequency. I can use to to move. My cats are very interested. <laughs> I was probably making like a terrible noise for the for the microphone. I'm curious. Hey, my cat Oscar does not like this. He's very wary of it. Even Olivia doesn't know what to think. I'll stop moving it and see if they uh, come any closer. Worth it. <laughs> I 
I, I really hope that that showed up on the camera. Let's see if I can bait him in again. This might take a little bit of time. He's already kind of wary. Olivia is, she's like sitting like four feet off to the other side. Not willing to come near it yet. Oh, she's moving closer. She might be stepping into the camera frame here in just a second. <laughs> Something else touched her and frightened her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was that was worth it. That was worth every second. All right. So on the inside, aside from the fact that it can see what I'm doing, it's basically got controls where I can change the vibration frequency. Too low and it won't do anything. Too high and it won't do anything. It honestly looks like It has a, like an auto switch that'll just it'll just drive itself. That's weird. If I hit the bell here. It's like looking for it's like it sees a spot but I don't know what spot it's seeing oh I think it sees I think it sees the infrared sensor from my uh, connect camera but I really have no idea what this is supposed to be it's a two-player mode, it would seem, but I'm not going to really worry about that. Yeah, it definitely seems that the 170... Hertz range is like exactly what it needs to move properly. Because everything else just doesn't doesn't want to do anything. Anyway, that's kind of it for that one. was discover more about the RC car. So it's telling me like, meet the team. Ah, 
There you are, Giant Chess. I've been keeping an eye on you. All right, trying to aim this properly is hard. You've been making the uh, Toy Con, haven't you? And playing with them too? Excellent. You'll never take me alive. Well, it's nothing like that. But first things first, you venture to the discover section of the game, and I have a little request for you. A request? Okay. Don't even know you. I sense potential in you. You could be an amazing inventor. Allow me to tell you about your semi-secret organization, the ToyCon Development Lab. I want you to become our newest member. Okay, cool. Excellent. And from this day on, you are officially the fourth member of the ToyCon development team. Now that the matter is settled, let's get started. I better introduce you to your colleagues. First up, we've got Lerna. I'm Lerna Latte. <laughs> oh my god. I'm the resident programmer here at the lab. It's always great to make great to meet fresh new talent. So you just so you know, Lerna is a wizard when it comes to technology. She knows about all kinds of complicated subjects you might never have heard about. And you also want to meet who is it, my turn? My name is Place All Oh my god. Place all the time. Plays all the time. I guess my job is, well, playing with stuff, really. It may, lo I'm, it may look like young Plays does nothing but play all day, but he has a wealth of insight when it comes to thinking up new kinds of games. He joined the team just recently, and we're looking forward to seeing what he can do. And, well, you know, everyone. And, oh, well, you know everyone. Our professor... Did you introduce yourself yet? Oh, I almost forgot. I'm Gary Pr Gary Rig Oh, Jerry Riggs, director of the ToyCon Development Lab. You can call me Professor Riggs or Professor Jerry, or well, sometimes people just call me Doc. Okay. He's got a PhD in fabrication tech. You know, there's nothing the professor can't make. I do like to think I'm pretty good at building things. But anyway, now you really have met the whole team. It's a pleasure to be working with you. We're going to have so much fun together. Now then, I should get you a little background on what we do here at the ToyCon Development Lab. Basically, our mission is to build fun creatures, creations to entertain the whole world. To do that, we need a team of people willing to master ToyCon projects and invent some brand new ones. First step, of course, is to learn all about the toy con we have right now. So, Giant Chess, are you ready? Of course. And that's what I like to hear. Well then, Giant Jazz, I hope you're ready to learn about how the toy con projects work. Excuse me. How to play with them. Can I skip this, please? And even how to repair and decorate them. In other words, I hope you're ready to learn everything there is to know about ToyCon. Giant Jazz together will master it all. All right then, Giant Jazz. I look forward to seeing what you can do with your time in the, joint, in the ToyCon development lab. All right, so it's talking about Discover. RC Car Basics. 
Ah, play Strike and Jazz. I see you've been playing with the IRC cars. How do you like it? It's all right, I guess. Hmm, I see. Well, I'm, home. I'm going to show you a bunch of fun things you can do with it. I think you'll be a little bit more enthusiastic once we're done. Hey, I had a really cool idea. Look! Oh, we basically made like a little obstacle course. I made an obstacle course. It's very good. I like the way you think. It's weird how it can move around when it's just made of cardboard, though. I can explain that. RC card is designed to move forward. When the vibrations from the Joy-Con travel through its legs... So it's important that the legs carry the vibrations properly. Make sure you don't accidentally bend them or anything. Yes, it's best to be extra gentle with the Joy-Con RC car. Oh, and I was wondering about this button. When I push it, all these weird things appear. What's up with that? Yeah, that. Like these long thin bars, what are those for? Uh, they're for adjusting the frequency. The speed of the vibration. You should experiment to find that speed that works best. Uh, only the one in the center seems to. <laughs> then what about this button and this one? Don't worry, I will explain in those in plenty of detail if you stick around. Let's uncover the RC car's secrets together. Alright, secret camera mode. Hey, Giant Jazz, have you tried this button yet? <laughs> yes, I've pressed it. Oh yeah? Because I just noticed that, noticed that when you press it, the little screen shows something cool. <laughs> You're seeing through the eyes of the IR camera on the Joy-Con. I wonder if that's really what the update was for. Maybe, we don't know. So that's what that is, cool, indeed. But there's more, the IR motion camera can even see in the dark. Tell me more, that's right. IR motion camera is able to see things at night or in dark places, just like a cat. I wonder what that's like. Well, let's take a closer look. If we cover the RC car with a box, So basically they're just showing that you can actually see what's inside the box, even though it's dark. See, that's one cool camera. And it's making me realize, yep, I got a great idea. Secret night missions. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All the freaking vibration sounds. <laughs> uh, sure. There are all kinds of fun ways to use it. Yep, check it out. Super special. It was so good. so good. He sat there in silence. I asked if he was okay. He just was like, it was an incredible sandwich. It was man. just a fucking good ass sandwich, yeah. Uh, and then right now, though, go get that pastrami sandwich at uh, Factory's Deli on Pico and like Robertson or whatever that is. Pico and. It's on Pico. Fucking, uh, if, you're, if you're in LA and you're. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Uh, night mode activate. Uh, what's... Oh, what's one of the freaking characters? A <laughs> ghost! That's no ghost. That's me! And... All right, so this is customizing your RC car. I don't need to worry about that. Toy-Con Sumo. Uh, Self-driving mode. What the heck is this thing? 
Oh, okay. Oh, that's a flag. To make one, just pop it out of the sheet and attach the marker sticker, and it's finished. So it's probably just a little, like, infrared reflective sticker that you stick to the flag. You can do all sorts of things with flags. Watch this. You're not even controlling it, but it moved. Is the RC car driving itself? <laughs> That's cutting edge Toy-Con tech. Right, technology marches on so fast, sometimes even I have a hard time keeping up. This here's the RC, RC car's self-driving mode. Can I try it for myself? Looks like this. Hit that button. Push the auto. Easy. And I just thought of a jillion ways to use it. Can't wait to make my own self-driving car and test it out. What are you waiting for? I want to see too. Talk about cutting edge. I think I've given myself a paper cut just looking at it. Oh my gosh. The jokes. So it says self-driving driving mode 2. I kind of wish that this was more of a manual. <laughs> self-driving mode is cool, but I need to know how it works. How does a car know where to go? Almost like the car has eyes. That's pretty much correct. The RC car does have eyes, or rather one eye. Like a cyborg, no way. You mean the IR motion camera? Bingo. The motion camera on the right Joy-Con acts as an eye unless the IRC car C. You know, that little flag has a sticker on it. The IR motion camera only needs to catch a glimpse of the sticker. Then it's off. Go RC car, go. I like how they speed it up because it's slow. <laughs> so that's how it works. So that's it. Eh? I see. I see. That's the way. That's why the IR motion uh, camera won't work if it's hidden or covered up by anything. It can't. It, it can't see the marker sticker. Have a look. Hold on a sec. As long as the IR motion camera can see the marker, I've got it. Check this out. So you put a marker on the end of the fishing rod, and now he's basically just like making it follow it around like a little like a little monster. I had the flag from the end of the fishing rod and reeled in an RC car. Nice idea. This says marker sticker roads. So you can basically make it travel along different things. Okay. <laughs> I get it. I get I get what this is. That's fine. You can have like little time trials and everything like that, so that's fine. So basically it gives you a way to go in depth into each of the little creations. So we have make again. Wait, what's this? There's like little extra things next to that. Anyway, so we made the RC car. Let's make something a little bit more intense. No. <laughs> Let's go with the fishing rod, shall we? I'm going to sit this off to the side.
Okay. There are five steps to complete. Grab the special parts bag. Says you don't need to open up the plastic bag just yet. This is the special parts bag. This is also where those uh, IR stickers are too for uh, making the RC car follow the things. Okay. Making the rod. So we need sheets A and B. a few sheets to use with this one, it seems. All the way up to F. Alright, so... Remove these five parts from sheets A and B. And then from B, well, it's the big guy. And then it wants. Two little things down at the end. There is still something left on there, so we'll just leave that alone. <laughs> now that I've gotten the cats like intrigued by the fact that it scared the hell out of them, um, they uh are coming up over here and just trying to investigate. <laughs> so I will remove that from their field of vision. Honestly, just so that they'll leave, they'll leave me alone. So I'm just removing the inner tabs. <sighs> so much trash in pieces. My big worry is, where the hell am I going to store any of this stuff once I'm done with it? <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could unfold it. Right? Anyway.
Okay, I've got all the pieces. Apparently this makes a fishing rod. Okay. Oh, now I need to see. I require just this one piece. Don't forget, if you have any trouble, you can use the back and forward buttons. Okay, I understand. The rod has three parts, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. Now let's get started on the first piece. There are three similar pieces. This one's the smallest. That's why it's Baby Bear. All right, so it's talking about these three. This one is the smallest. It's Baby Bear. Oh, God, I really wish that you could skip through all of this. Crease all the pieces. I want you to have an idea of, like, how quickly this is moving. Because I have to push and hold this button to keep it going. But that's as fast as it goes. <laughs> I will now crease. Okay, it is creased. You fold it together and insert the tab. Then you have this thing. Close this top, and you fold this in here just like that. Then we're going to add an eyelet. Made up of two pieces, the grommet on the left and the washer on the right. Take a blue grommet and washer out of the bag, the shorter of the two kinds of grommet. Okay. Two alignment pieces should set neat, neat, neatly together. This goes through here. And then this should snap right down on top of it. Which, in my mind, means that this can never be taken apart now. <laughs> snap it on the wrong way. 
you can ask an adult to pop it out with a coin. Okay, so you can actually remove it. Right, now put a fold on the tab on the tail, and it's ready to go. So, I'm gonna fold this back like that. Baby bear is done. Why, why did I have? Why did I call it baby bear? <laughs> so I'm gonna put that off to the side. All right. Now we're gonna go with this one. We're going to do all the creasing. Fold the extra tabs just yet. I'm gonna let it play through its entire thing. Oh. It actually wants me to do this. this, apparently. All right. All right, let's clip that in place. And it wants us to fold these in and lock each other back. This would fit in that little slot right there. Giving us a slightly bigger shape like the one we had before. So we're going to take another grommet and washer. pieces now together. Then we fold this one up. And now that one is all done. So, oh wait, now we're going to join uh, Baby Bear with Mama Bear. So join them together while the tab on the Baby Bear tail end is folded. Are they nice and slow? Try sliding Baby Bear out and back in, not too hard. Oh, just it's saying not to do it too hard. So, put this in here like that. I don't like this because they called it Mama Bear and Baby Bear. It's like some sort of weird bear threesome. <laughs> okay, that's what it's going to be at the end. All right, so my guess is we're gonna do this one now. Nope.
Oh my god, this takes forever. Alright, so we just gotta crease all this crap. Okay, so I'm going to fold this part over, to make a small box. And insert this tab in the middle. Fold this over, that tab goes in that place. Fold this over, and that tab goes there. So have we made like a little rest for this? So now we're gonna build the biggest part. Which they call Papa Bear. And I wish I had somebody else that could <laughs> fast forward through all this stuff for me. Seriously, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to go through this entire thing until it actually gets to like the building phase. Oh, hi! How's it going? I'm waiting forever while this thing uh, takes forever. Like it's got like a little instruction manual, which is nice, but. Well, she's a good girl. She wants to make sure that mom is clean. <laughs> all right. I made it through all the instructions so I can fold this stuff now. One question I have is, is this better than little pieces of plastic controller add-on nonsense? <laughs> okay, so there's that. that that folds in like that. It does look like a bunch of random crap. <laughs> but uh, it, it all has a purpose. Like, the first thing that I made was a little RC car, which takes RC car loosely it's more like a little rc bug like the uh the vibration in each of the controllers either turn it left or right or move it forward basically so that was the first thing that they have you make well i need one of those little plastic grommets now This goes through here. Let's 
See, there's not enough stuff in there to, like, keep it in place. Also, if they've already gone over, like, a certain aspect of the, uh... the build why do they have to make you watch the same sort of thing over again like that doesn't make any sense to me oh it wants you to put this in here i missed a step because i was too busy creasing and fast forwarding that piece is in there to help give it sturdiness. <laughs> Most expensive carpenter. Yeah. Actually, this is the cheaper of the two cardboard sets. <laughs> Alright, so it says, and get this, this thing is called Papa Bear. You got Mama Bear and Baby Bear. And it says, put Mama Bear and Baby Bear together and then make sure they move in and out. And it's just like, I don't know, I don't like that. <laughs> All right, so it says we're making a small little box. All right, we're gonna crease and fold all of the things again. Just takes forever. I would have preferred if they had added, like, like had the video mode so you could have, like, the video playing or have a, um, have, like, a comic book type mode or, like, a manual mode where you could just sort of, like, change pages. Like a Lego instruction manual. That'd be great. So this... <laughs> This little piece, apparently, slides into Papa Bear. Check your work carefully. It's easy to get backward. So this goes in. I scared the cats with the RC toy. That was fun. <laughs> it did serve that purpose really well. My guess is that those little holes line up. This tab goes in here. You like it? You like it when I drop things. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that great? And then it wants me to slide Mama Bear and Papa Bear, or Baby Bear and Mama Bear, into Papa Bear. Make sure the tab's folded. There we go. There's all three bears <laughs> connected. Then let's test out our sliding, our work by sliding Mama Bear and Baby Bear out and in. Extendomatic. Some weird bear three. Okay. So that's the beginning of our rod. So almost done with this step now, you'll fold a little Joy-Con holder. Which is this piece. Like, the whole way it's set up, like, this is definitely for a very specific age group, and I will completely admit that. 
I mean, that's okay. That's fine. Like, that's that's what it was made for, so... I'm not gonna complain about that. It's just... The way that it's put together... <laughs> or the way that, like... It's presented could use a little bit of work. There you go. It's a pillow for a Joy-Con. So this was step one of five. <laughs> and now we make the real. So now we have to get more pieces. I wish I did this one first. And okay, that's everything out of part A. And then we need stuff from part B. these little they look like droppers okay now give me like a minute while it asks me to change pages I need stuff from part number D. Oh, it says I need everything from sheet D. Okay, now I got a whole bunch of stuff to pop all these tabs out of. Oh, the interactivity. Learning is real. Is that everything? Nope. Yet more tabs. All right, let's get all the pieces sorted so I can do this quickly. <laughs> or as quickly as the instruction manual allows me to.
Here's a pro tip, you can fast forward the video by oh my god, really? Why wouldn't they tell you that before? It, they just told me that you can push and hold this to play and fast forward it by stretching it outwards. They just told me that. What a rip. They could have told me that like half an hour ago. <laughs> it's like, no, we've got to keep this one secret. Otherwise, they'll get through the content too quickly. <laughs> Waste his time, 2K18. Indeed. Now we make a little... little shape. The six sides hexagon? Is that what it is? Alright. Add the sides of the reel. Which are these guys. I still really liked um, Donkey's whole thing on this one where he just, <laughs> just playing with the box and like he did his like cringe worthy <laughs> uh, taping it all together. That was that was great. It was far more appropriate. All right, now I've got this little thing. It's complete. Let's fit the reel into the rod. Alright, so it says to have it facing this way, and it says that it goes like that. Okay. So this slides in here, just like this, apparently. And then clip in those spots. This really looks like a fishing rod. Hooray! What a piece of genius equipment. All right, so we're gonna do some more creasing. This is Folding Simulator 2018. <laughs> Child Labor Simulator 
way. It's like a little cardboard box. Now we need this arrow looking thing that we literally just fold like that. Cardboard Sim 2018. <laughs> And we slide this in here so that it comes out that side. Then we need this piece. Which we fold in half. Increase these little tabs. Turn this upside down. And apparently this goes on the back. Like that. But that's so loosely held in there. And we do the same thing to the other side. It actually, it actually makes me want to play... Um, there's like an Ikea furniture building simulator or something like that. <laughs> I want to play that. <laughs> I feel like it'd be, it would be more fun than this. <laughs> All right, then I have this piece here, which I'm actually glad for because I don't feel like this is actually being held together that well. So we take this and we fold it in half and we slide it all the way over. Until it meets the other end. Okay. Then this piece slides all the way through, just like that. It has some spin to it. So we're getting somewhere. And then it says, we need this piece. And we crease all these. I'd rather be working Simulator 2018. Okay, and then it says we also need this apparently. I'm just going to get this ready and throw it on the ground. There you go. Another one of your favorite parts. Me dropping something. Apparently, this goes in here. So it's got a thing in the middle of it. Okay, probably to strengthen it, I would imagine. It says we need one of the other grommets to 
darker colored ones this time because I think they're bigger. Oh, okay. So we're gonna take this, put those pieces together, take this here, put this piece through, and then clip them all together. So that way they are actually held together in place. Honestly, the thing that has prepared, prepared me for this the most is my work with Starbucks, folding all of the boxes that they use for their little special displays. <laughs> and this goes here, and all these tabs fold in. And then we have this piece, which spins. And just as I thought, <clears throat> we take this piece and we put this on the other end of this. Facing in that direction. All right, got four more things here. <clears throat> These get folded in half. And go through each side of this to help hold it together, like a little plug. wasn't gripping it properly, so I had to go fix that. Okay, <clears throat> there's that. It actually has action. <laughs> so not only does it extend and retract, but it has real rotating action. Okay, what are, what are these parts for? Okay. These have like music notes on them. Oh, I get it. <clears throat> it adds a sound effect. So basically, you take this, slide it in there. And it should. Make an actual clicking noise, okay. But then why did it have me take both? One of these is a spare, so don't worry, just, oh. Then don't tell me to punch it out. The reel is finished. So step three is making the ocean. Do you realize that we're gonna make an ocean out of cardboard? All right, so we need parts from E and F. 
we not we might not finish this particular piece. So this is part. This is step number three. Keep in mind. Out of five, and I might continue the last part of this on a separate stream because. In 20 minutes, I want to be doing something else. This looks like a lovely ocean. Guess what? We're building an ocean now. Did I just blow your mind? <laughs> the game actually said that. I wish I was joking. The stream was started as something that might have been interesting, slowly devolving into me getting angry at pieces of cardboard. <laughs> and usually building things is relaxing. At least that's how I feel about it. That's why I play with Lego. But then again, their instructions don't require 15 minutes of fast forwarding just to do one step. I will say the sounds that they have on the uh, on the game are much um, exciting and fun than the sounds that I get from this. <laughs> They have cool little sound effects for the uh, tabs popping into place. Okay, and then we have this piece. Which has a whole bunch more pieces to fold.
Okay. Makes sense to me. And this piece goes over this. So it sits like that for a second. And I come back around here and I get another grommet. I'd rather be watching Wallace and Grommet. Um, and it literally actually does have you not attach this last piece. That sort of just sits there for right now. All right, we to step four, making the spool. So we need parts from pieces E and F. It's actually getting to the small stuff now, so this actually might be able to be finished in the next 15 minutes. At least I'm sure as hell hoping. Ocean. <laughs> Suspend your belief, disbelief, I, I swear to God. These are the real high seas. So many tabs. Those are the last pieces we need for the fishing rod. All right, so this is it. This is the final like set of pieces that we need to punch out. So now we're taking this piece, and I guess we're going to crease things. Never was I more right in my life. This folds over into there. Got like this weird little bracket looking thing. Okay. Then we take these. Slide it on there. Then it looks like we take one of these. And this probably locks it into place, is my guess. Let's take out two rubber bands from the bag. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the string. And here's the two rubber bands. Plastic bag can go off to the side. So we're going to take a rubber band and we're going to slot it inside the center of that piece, and then we're going to slide that in there. We're going to take this piece, and we slide this through the center of all of them to help lock them in place. 
which is good because this is feeling rather kind of loose. And so there we go. Rubber band side is locked in. All right, we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Pull that over. Take the rubber band, place it through. Slide that in there. Pull this over and Slide it through the gap in all of these. Okay, there we go. That looks like a spool if I've ever seen one. Now we're going to need the long orange piece of string. We need to tie knots in both ends. And it just wants you to do that little loop knot, basically. So just like that. Then it says to Take this and shove it through. Because there's a little hole on the side here. I almost kind of feel like we should have done this first. Alright, so it says that it wants to be rolled, spooled over in this direction. Right, there we go. Okay, that should be enough for now. Now we're going to slide this string up through here. And then it says to take the rubber bands on both sides. Sort of just loop it through these holes here on the side. So that basically suspends, like, the spool in place. It actually works. It kind of like retracts the, the cable. Oh my god. I like that. That action is very good. Okay, we're now gonna close this up. It's very loosely closed up, which is good because obviously you're gonna wanna come back to that.
All right, we're actually going to spool this through the, uh, the reel here now. Again, this is one of those situations where I kind of feel that they should have had us do this first. At least this can be reopened to help make it a little bit easier. That wasn't the case. I don't know how I would have done that. <laughs> okay, god damn it. Please, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> I did it the wrong, the wrong way around. I was getting too anxious to complete the thing. Okay, there we go. Right? And so basically, we are testing to see if works properly which it does okay all right I got like five minutes to test this out <laughs> the last step is pretty simple so if you feel ready to go let's do it we're gonna insert Joy-Con. So we're gonna disassemble our RC car. There we go. And it looks like we're gonna slot our left Joy-Con into this spot here. That's done. We're going to slot our right Joy-Con. Into this spot right there. Alright, so it says we're gonna insert the switch control or switch console <laughs> in here now. And it might be a bit hard to read. Uh, try 
pressing forward a bit more. The ocean calls to you! We're gonna play now. Three seconds, three long seconds of hold time is more than enough. <laughs> okay. When playing with the Toy-Con Fishing Rod, be mindful of your surroundings and other people when playing. Alright, so it's checking the Toy-Con. Attach. Okay. Sit the ocean on the floor. And spin the reel to start. Alright, I'm not on the floor. Okay, so it does actually sort of know which direct which direction I'm Okay, that's that's actually kinda neat. On the screen if you if you see like it when I actually move this, it does actually move it like rem it raises the hook, lowers the hook and everything. <laughs> but like, that whole idea... So now I'm underneath the water. And I can try to catch some fish. Looks like I can go way down deep. <laughs> Let me actually mess around with the uh, camera here. Just one second. Again, I'm sorry if this isn't perfect. But it appears that I have basically got my I've got my hook going down deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the ocean. Which is kind of neat that I can go all this way. So I've actually touched the bottom. Looks like there's some big fish down here. Oh, there's a giant shark in the background. This is, okay, this is actually kind of neat. <laughs> now... these big ones. something I swear to god how did that break my hook too oh, it's like way too overexposed Huh. 
on, let me catch something. Even if it's just a tiny bed. So I do have to be careful. <laughs> I started with a fit with a great white shark, it would seem, and then I ended with a mackerel. Anyway, <laughs> that does it. Um, I might come back with more of this uh, in the future, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it be. But yeah, we'll see you guys later. Bye for now. <clears throat>